after, after lunch, hopefully you'll have been suitably refreshed. And we're into the last session of the conference. <coughs> so I'd just like to welcome Dave Thornley from Sheffield Hallam University and Lynn McIntosh from Edinburgh Napier University, who are going to come on and tell us about Infrastructure Group and what being involved in that means. I haven't got a clicker. No, um, no slides, no death by PowerPoint for this one, I'm afraid. Um, so this is, the, the, this is the part of the agenda where we like to take the opportunity to big up the infrastructure group. Um, and it's very often a fairly transparent attempt to draw some new members into the group. We like to have a new blood and a bit of new commitment um, coming in every so often. And I've been chair of the group for nearly three years now. It's a three-year term, so in February next year I'm going to stop and someone else can take it on. And, um, I'm quite looking forward to that. I could do with a bit of time off. But um, as part of, this, part of this session, it was helpfully suggested I might like to look back at my time as chair and talk a bit about some of the things that we've done in the group, um, which seems fair enough, I suppose. So I, I became chair of the group two and a half years ago in not perfect circumstances when the existing chair at the time suddenly resigned um, fairly unexpectedly, took a number of group members with him. And there was a very serious conversation about whether we could continue the group or not, whether it was actually going to be viable to go on. And uh, we, the remaining members of the group, thought actually it's definitely it's a really important group that we have, that we need to keep it going, and it's got some real value to put back into the community. So we kind of made a joint commitment to do it. Um, and I ended up as chair. I'm not sure whether I won or lose that, won, won or lost that particular conversation at the time. But at the time we were, um, we had. Relatively few members, not much commitment. We had not done anything for a while, and so a big part of the last few years has been really trying to re-establish the group, get some new blood into it, get some energy and commitment going, and start to do things that are, out, that are able to help the community. Um, and there's a real challenge in running these size of groups as chair. It's a bit like most people don't have our support. Um, no one has to be there. What you can do depends on who turns up at any given point. Um, and no one... It's, it, pe pe people are really, really pushed for time. And the kind of people that say yes to being involved in your size tend to be the kind of people that say yes to many other things as well. And so when you come to say, what are we going to do? How are we going to do it? Everyone says, oh, I'm far too busy. I can't possibly get involved in something like that. Um, and so we've really struggled. We've really aimed to get systems of mutual support into the group that let us shift things around and get things done, even when the people who have volunteered to do it are busy or can't make it. Um, and we've got, the new, we've got many new members. One of them, Lynn, is going to tell you about how she joined the group and what she thinks of it in a couple of minutes' time. And over the past couple of years, we've really worked on getting it together. And so this year has been probably the biggest, busiest year we've had as a group since I've been on it, which is probably about eight years now, I think. Um, and I'm really proud of being part of that. So we've turned this into an annual event, which is fantastic. Not many people, because this is, you know, no one has to do it. This is our hobby, if you like. Not many people would try and do something like this as a hobby. Um, um, the ones that do are probably semi-certifiable, I think. So we're, um, we're good with that. We ran a, a one-day event in May about security, and we're going to come back to that next year. That's a topic that we think is a great, great value and great interest to the, to the community. So we're going to keep trying to run that one as an annual event. Um, one of the areas Lynn will talk about is our first paper that we're publishing, ever, I think. And we've got one more thing to do this year that we're kind of committed to, we talked about it yesterday, which is getting a survey out um, which will start to give you a list of who's running what to do with infrastructure across the community. So if you want to know someone running HP servers with compelling storage on an extreme network, you'll be able to look down the list, find out who it is, and phone them up to find out, find out what it's working for them. So. Coming to the end of being chair, I'm very proud of what we've done. It's been a fantastic opportunity to get involved in, um, in rebuilding a group and doing some really exciting stuff for the community. It's been really hard work. I'm not going to lie about that. But I think it's been entirely worthwhile. And um, whoever gets it next has got a great group to come and work with and a fantastic opportunity. And now I'm shutting up. Thank you. Um, Lynn, come and talk about that.
Steve said, my name is uh, Lynn McIntosh, I'm Data Centre and Operations Manager at Edinburgh Napier University and I've been an IG Group committee member for the last two years um, and I'm just going to talk a little bit about um, my experience of being part of the committee and the great work we do. So it's not meant to be a hard sell um, but we are always looking for new members. Um, I was sitting, as you are now, two years ago at IG15 and my colleague Ian Fiddis stood up and spoke about the IG group and becoming a committee member. Um, I had no intentions when I arrived at IG15 at the Oxford Belfry of joining a committee, but as Ian spoke about being part of a group that steered the infrastructure community, shared best practice with other institutions, hosted committee meetings, Joining the committee started to sound more and more like something that I wanted to be involved in. Um, I forgot my clicker. There we go. Um, IG15 and laterally IG16 for me had been a unique experience um, where the speakers were relevant to the infrastructure environment. Um, I could speak to like minded people who were all experiencing the same daily challenges and successes we were within the university and excluding the exhibitor exhibition no one was trying to sell me anything which was lovely um, and it really was like a missing part of the jigsaw um, to me being on the IG committee is an extension of what we experience here at IG events so what's involved in being a committee member well the committee meets four times a year in different locations and they are hosted by each of the committee members. We do look for members to be actively involved with events such as this one, which Matt and his team have led, or the recent cybersecurity event, which Nigel and his team worked on. Um, but it doesn't have to be an event. Recently, the committee members have been working on an IG survey to go out to the community and we are also pulling together infrastructure hot topics which we hope to put up on our USISA web pages. The IG group recognises that there is a commonality of issues across the sector. One such issue that was discussed at recurring committee meetings was out of our support. Um, and an output from this discussion, as Dave's mentioned, was a report pulled together <laughs> mainly by one of our outgoing committee members, Steve Aldridge, uh, and we're now taking the opportunity at IG17 to launch this discussion report and making it available on our group web pages. The committee felt that service levels provided to support IT services outside core hours was an area that some had addressed successfully, others strived to deliver, and many had just given up and were running an ad hoc best effort set up. The report looks at formal arrangements already in place at some institutions and where no arrangements are in place it details issues that need to be considered. Um, as part of the report and it being gathered together we also acknowledged that our colleagues in the networking group had produced a report in 2015 and that was as a result of a survey that they had carried out. Um, so I'm going to briefly share with you the arrangements we have in place at Edinburgh Napier University and these along with other institutions set up contributed to the discussion report. So at Edinburgh Napier University we have a formal, I'll say in inverted commas, um, out of our support policy. Um, we have a standby and call out policy which was originally created in 2008. It was revised in 2010 and is due for its next revision this year. Uh, its purpose to improve the availability of key services beyond core hours. Um, and within our out of our support policy, the commitment to fix faults is on a best endeavours basis. Um, we don't support every service, but we have a list of key services that are covered by out of hours. So, as you would expect, our VLE, our email service, our data storage, 
and there's a few others that are in that list. Um, we've pulled together key technology groups and one member of staff from each group is on standby. Uh, we publish rotas for each tech group. They're available in SharePoint calendars, so they can be accessed on and off-prem. Um, and each person that's on on-call has a laptop or a connected mobile device, and they also have a smartphone. Our um, shifts are, our standby shifts are 5 o'clock to 9 o'clock, Monday to Friday, and 9 o'clock till 5 o'clock at weekends and public holidays. We did sort of question when we reviewed this what happened to Friday night, but I think there was a recognition that most of the staff were doing other things on Friday night, so we wouldn't <laughs> ask them to go on standby. Um, managers are also available to call if escalation's needed, and that's just expected of the managers that they will answer their mobile phones. Um, and our call out is instigated by our service desk or by Norman, who provide our out of hours hosted service desk. We pay our on-call staff and we have different rates for standby and call out. Um, our call out is uh, surprisingly, and I should find some wood, touch wood, touch something, um, not used terribly often. We're very fortunate that our services remain up. Um, so Edinburgh Napier setups just one of the many that we looked at in pulling together the IG discussion report on out of our support. Um, I'd encourage you to visit the pages as the report is both thought-provoking and it could help point you in the right direction or simply start a discussion within your institution. So to conclude and let you all prepare for the next speaker, uh, a role on the IG committee is about making the group relevant and work for the community. Um, if you'd be interested in being part of that and joining a genuinely great group of people, then please speak to myself or any of the committee members who are here. And there's other people. Yes, there they all are. Um, in the, over the next couple of hours. Alternatively, our details are all on the IG group you size up pages. And one last. Right, finally, as Dave's mentioned, he's stepping down after three years as chair of the IG group. And on behalf of the current IG committee members, I'd like to thank Dave for his commitment and contribution to the chair role over the last three years and to the committee for over seven years, I was told. Um, during your three years as IG chair, the group has continued to grow and develop, and we have run a growing number of successful events under your leadership. Um, as you step down as chair, you do so with IG perfectly placed to continue to advance as a group. So thanks, Dave, from all of us. <laughs>